You are about to listen to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast, hosted by Craig Forrestal. Find Craig on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy. The That Sports Guys podcast is proudly featured by NFL Draft Diamonds, your draft coverage king. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some football talk. Hello and welcome to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. I am Craig Forstall. You may know me from Twitter as at that underscore sports underscore guy. But today it is all about former Tulane offensive lineman Ben Newtson. Ben, what's going on with you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I uh, I got a little bit of uh, introduction to just how old my knees are. My my <laughs> New Year's resolution today was to start working out, but then my four year old decided that he wanted to go play soccer today too. And let's just say I'm already feeling it, but I'm good other than that. And Ben, I always like to start off with everyone and getting to know a little bit about where it is that they grew up. You grew up in Granger, Indiana. Tell us what that was like. What's it like growing up in Granger? So, you know, you know Granger, you know, is, is a little bit different than, you know, your prototypical, you know, Midwestern town that you're thinking of because, you know, it's five minutes from, from Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. So, you know, growing up, that's the biggest thing everyone asks me, you know, the conversation always goes like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from Granger. Like, well, well, where's that? And I'm like, well, it's it's in South Bend. They're like, well, well, where's South Bend? It's like, it's where Notre Dame is. Like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So that's always how the conversation goes, um, you know. And I guess that's, you know, the most notable thing, you know, about where I grew up. You know, I grew up going to, to you know, Notre Dame football games and basketball games and all that, um, you know. And my friends, you know, are all, you know, still fall, you know, Notre Dame. Uh, so that's the biggest thing I would say about growing up there. I mean, other than that, you know, being in Indiana, you know, and I'm sure this is something we'll talk about uh, later. You know, I played a lot of basketball uh, being uh, in Indiana. Um, and when people say, you know, the best basketball is played in Indiana, you know, I firmly believe that, you know looking at, you know, I've been a lot of other places, you know, been in Virginia, been in, you know, Louisiana, you know, I'll go to my teammates, you know, their high schools or whatever, and they'll go to their high school basketball game, I'll go with them. And I know Indiana is definitely, you know, the place where, where it's meant to be. So that's, you know, what my life was like growing up, um, you know, it was a lot of, a lot of basketball and a lot of nerd and football. So. And let's keep it right there. You read my mind. Besides football, you played basketball in high school. Ben, what sports did you play as a kid, and was football your first love? So, uh, you know, the first sport, you know, I probably played was, was basketball, you know, being in Indiana, you know, like I touched on, you know, it's, you know, you see, you know, the movie Hoosiers with the giant, you know, the the TV po- or the movie poster they have, mm-hmm. you know, with the, the basketball hoop on the side of, of the barn door, you know, I had mm-hmm. that same thing, just the basketball hoop connected to, you know, my play gym, you know, as a kid, you know, with no, didn't have any pavement out there, you know, you didn't need that. (laughs) Um, But, you know, that, that's, you know, what it was like, you know, growing, that was my first sport, but, you know, the one sport, you know, that I really played growing up that I really liked and it's ironic because I was very bad at it. It never was good. I, you know, my eyesight wasn't good until I got to high school. I finally got glasses, you know, so I couldn't see anything, but I love baseball, although I couldn't see the ball to hit it at all. Um, so I, I never played high baseball in high school or anything like that. But, you know, I really love baseball. I'm still a big baseball fan, Cubs fan. Uh, and I follow, you know, all, all the games still. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, I started playing football early, too. You know, I played in third grade. I mean, my parents took me up there because I wanted to play so bad. And normally the cutoff was, you know, fourth grade was the youngest then up. But when they brought me in and saw that, you know, I would – be too heavy to be able to carry the ball as a third grader. They'd have to put what they called, you know, a tape on my helmet to say that I was too heavy. They're like, oh, yeah, he'll be fine. He can play. <laughs> um, so that that was definitely, you know, I, I got – I played a lot of sports really early. Um, uh, but, you know, basically baseball, you know, basketball and football, you know, played a little bit, of, you know, like the peewee soccer, that type of stuff. But, you know, as a kid and as a middle school, you know, my parents – I mean, I ran track in, in middle school too. My parents always said, you know – we want you just to try everything you want to and, you know, finally, you know, and eventually whatever you're good at or whatever you want to do, you, you'll end up picking yourself when you get to that point, you know. And, you know, for the longest time, you know, I played basketball through high school and it wasn't really clear until my junior year which one, you know, I would be better at or which one would be more pursued in my future. And football worked out, you know, I've had a great time playing, you know, college football and all that, but, you know, 
I, I loved all those sports, um, you know, but, you know, the process figured itself out, which one I would be, I'd be better at. <laughs> and uh, funny story, same thing happened to me with my baseball career. I uh, didn't know that I couldn't see the ball either. And that's why I uh, was always batting last. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel you on that one. Now, let's stick there with baseball because I saw that you were an umpire for Little League baseball games growing up in Granger. What was that like? Any crazy stories having to eject anyone? I, so, I mean, that is the thing everyone asks, you know, when they see that you're an umpire, like, did you have to eject someone? Uh, I did eject three people during my entire baseball career. So I was doing like the, the, the right equivalent would be like the AAU basketball. So not just like little league, mm -hmm. but like the travel teams or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So things were, and, and I was doing older kids too. I was doing up to like 14, 15. So things weren't, you mm -hmm. know, little league, they were a little more serious, um, you know, and there was some of the parents, you know, get crazy and it is what it is. But I mean, it wasn't anything bad or anything. I mean, it was, I, I, I say that saying I don't have any crazy stories about anything. A lot of it was just, you know, ask the parents to stop arguing and they don't i mean that type of thing um, exactly. but uh no i mean it was a good time you know me and a bunch of my my high school football basket and basketball high school basketball teammates did it and um you know we enjoyed it it paid a lot better than working at mcdonald's or doing whatever um you know and it let us you know we were outside and you know it was a lot more enjoyable than you know flipping burgers or doing something like that you know we were able to have fun or whatever you know some of the ways they're set up, you know, we would go to the, the leagues or whatever would have, you know, tournaments all over Indiana. And as part of the deal, they would put the umpires up in the hotels uh, at the tournament, at the tournament hotel. So we would, you know, do that in the summer. And, you know, and basically, you know, me and a bunch of my friends would go umpire these games and have a hotel to hang out at night. You know, it was, it was a really fun time. Um, and, you know, some, I had some good memories there and, you know, even, you know, made a lot of good friends doing that. Um, you know, it was funny, the, the South Bend Tribune put out an article when I first committed to Virginia about it, you know, and the people are saying like, oh, yeah, it helps him, you know, get more depth <laughs> in his past that, you know, it's something I'd never thought about or even like came up to my, came, you know, not sure what it helped or didn't help. But uh, for me, it was more just a good way to make money and, you know, have a good time in the same, in the same vein. And now let's move ahead to the recruiting process. Ben, what was the recruiting process like for you in high school? So um, it started up, you know, during, you know, after, during my junior year, you know, like for most kids it does, you know, and I was recruited, you know, by a handful of schools in the Big Ten and, and the ACC and went and looked at a lot of places, you know, we did all the junior days with my parents and all that. And the thing, you know, that was most important for me and probably is what led me to make my decision was, you know, my academics um, coming out of it. That's, you know, what I really considered. So that's why when you look at what my, my top two schools were, you know, Purdue and Virginia, you know, makes a lot of sense considering, you know, what, you know, I wanted out of the school academically. Um, you know, I, I, we had a good time. We enjoyed it. You know, I, I ended up, you know, committing to Virginia because of, um, I'm a big history guy. And if you're a big history person, there's no better school to go to than Virginia. Um, plus, you know, it was fit what I wanted academically. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we enjoyed it. I mean, it was, you know, crazy, a lot like, I mean, we, you know, the process is, you know, now and is going to be in the next few months. But, um, you know, me and my, my parents, you know, had a good time, you know, took a lot more road trips than we ever had in those few months driving all over, you know, the Midwest, you know, I joked with my parents, I ended up committing to the school that was furthest away that was recruiting me. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it just, it just was the right fit regardless of distance at, at, at that time. And then can you talk about the versatility that you bring to a team and the offensive line, having played both right and left guard and also right and left tackle? It, I mean, the versatility is a big part of it. You know, I uh, played guard at Virginia, you know, and, Played, I started at both right and left guard there and, you know, played there. Then when I came to Tulane, I started at guard. And then uh, as, you know, because of injury, like it's very common, you know, I was needed to, to move, you know, to move out there and, you know, play and, um, you know, help out the team out best needed. And, you know, as, and as soon as I moved to tackle, you know, it was something like instantly clicked with me. You know, I was playing, you know, a lot better than I was at guard, you know, and, 
you know, I was named, you know, captain at that point and started, you know, I played so well that they started me at the other tackle position and played well there. Um, you know, I definitely translate more as a tackle in the NFL. That being said, you know, I'd be stupid just to go and say like, oh, I just want to be a tackle in NFL. I don't want to play guard. You know, you know, a lot of those teams, you know, the utility player is so valuable. That sixth lineman, you know, they can mm-hmm. plug in anywhere, you know, mm-hmm. it's so valuable to teams, you know that they, they need someone who's, you know, smart enough, you know, which, you know, I like to think that I am considering my academic background and, you know, what I've shown on the tape, but also, you know, versatile enough that they've had the experience playing everywhere, um, you know, so that's what I say. I definitely say, you know, I ended the season at right tackle. So that's where I'd say, you know, probably be my best position because I'm most comfortable with at the current moment, but the transition to left tackle, you know, isn't hard for me. I've done it, you know, mid series before during a game uh, and didn't have any issues. So, um, uh, that's, you know, I, I, whatever, whatever will get me on the field in the NFL is, you know, the position I think is my best position, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. And now, Ben, when I say this, I, I mean this in the nicest possible way, you're a mountain sized human being listed at six foot seven and 305 pounds. So immediately when people see you, they see the size but can you take us through a self-scouting report on your game? Yeah, I can. You know, the, the one thing I would say, you know, for someone who's six foot seven, 305 pounds, you know, I move around a lot better than most people that are that size. You know, being able to play guard, you know, I've obviously on power plays and stuff like that had to pull and had to be good at it to be able to play at that position. And then I tackle the same way, you know, you got to be able to stop the speed rush. Um, so that's one thing, you know, as I bring is, you know, that size, you know, a lot of it is, you know, Part of that too, you know, is, you know, the size helps you a lot, you know, when you're getting a bull rush from someone, you know, that mass helps a lot, you know, with pass rush in the NFL. Um, before you equate, you know, whatever strength the guy has, you know, so that type of thing. But, you know, the one thing, you know, I think I really, you know, want to, you know, teams understand that I can bring to the table is, you know, my intelligence and being able to be as versatile as possible. You know, like we talked about, you know, being able to play right guard, left guard, left tackle, right tackle. You know, wherever they need me to play. And that's what I pride myself on during my collegiate career is, you know, um, you know, I have goals and I'm sure we'll get to those here in a little bit. But, you know, they're all team oriented for me. You know, I want to, you know, you know, do whatever is best for the team. And that's, you know, what I would say is, you know, the biggest thing in my game is, you know, if the coach asks me to do something, I figure out how to do it. Um, that That's something that, that's big for me. You know, I'm, I am a raw prospect, you know. I played tackle for not even really a whole season with NFL tape, but I think if teams look at my tape and look at what I was able to produce in that year and then think about what I can do having an entire off season and summer training at tackle, I think teams will, you know, have a lot that they can hang their hat on with that. So. And now when you decided to enter the graduate portal, what were you looking for in a program and did the family ties to Louisiana play a factor at all? Uh, they, they did. Um, the, the, what I, I mean, what I was looking for and the reason, you know, I decided to transfer from UVA was, you know, I, I wanted to study business, uh, as my master's program. And, you know, I was sitting down with my academic advisor, you know, trying to figure out how do we make this work? Um, cause I got into the UVA, uh, MS and comm program, which is a fantastic program. Uh, and we were sitting down, how do I make this work with, with, you know, their schedule and the football schedule. And by the time, you know, I realized, you know, all the practices I'd have to miss, the concessions I have to do, I was like, well, this isn't really fair to me, the program, or the team. So that's, you know, when I decided, you know, to enter the transfer portal um, at that time, you know, and it basically it had to be, you know, somewhere I could do a master's in business and somewhere that was a highly, you know, academic place, you know, and I basically came down to, you know, Vanderbilt, UCLA, and Tulane. Um, the nice thing about Tulane was uh, my sister went there. She's a 2013 graduate. So they didn't have to sell me on the school. They just had to, you know, pitch the football program to me because I already knew what the school was about and had a good ideas of what, you know, students who are Tulane grads are capable of. Um, and so, you know, Coach Fritz is awesome. You know, Coach uh, Ken- Cody Kennedy was the offensive line coach there when I was being recruited. And he's, you know, a great guy, a good friend and, and someone, you know, I trust a lot. And, you know, Will Hall, you know, the new head coach at Southern Miss, it pains me to see as a Tulane grad to see Southern Miss have such a good head coach, but he's a good guy and he's going to have a lot of success there. Um, but it's, uh, you know, that, that was the thing that really drew me to Tulane. You know, obviously, you know, my sister had already proven that it's a good academic institution, 
you know, it was the my uh, the coaches staff that that really sealed the deal on the, in that case. And now, Ben, you recently received an invite to the College Gridiron Showcase. Can you share what it means to be recognized by them and also what you hope to show NFL teams at the event? Uh, I mean, it's a great honor. You know, I, it's always good to have people say that you're doing a good job. And I think, you know, with all these all-star games, you know, invites, you know, it, it definitely, you know, validates what you're doing. I mean, I think the CGS invite means, you know, even more this year with, you know, the NFLPA and the, the other games, you know, getting canceled, the East West Shrine, you know, not having, you know, in-person events, you know, so uh, I appreciate that. You know, it's one thing that it definitely is, you know, it's an opportunity um, to go out there and show what I can do. Um, you know, the one thing, you know, looking at what the itinerary at the CGS is going to look like um, this year, you know, they're putting a lot of emphasis on, you know, interviews with teams and meeting with scouts um, because, you know, they have to cut back on the, the contact part of it and the physical activity part because of, of COVID, which is understandable. But, you know, I think that plays a lot into my strengths. I think, you know, it'll let me, you know, show to teams, you know, I'm intelligent, you know, I understand how football works and I understand, you know, how to learn a playbook. I think, which is a lot of it, you know, not every college player can say that, you know, or and they're not a lot of college players, you know, have my credentials, you know, having, you know, two masters and having, you know, a bachelor's degree in three years from, you know, schools like UVA and Tulane. Um, so that's the one thing, you know, just looking at itinerary is, you know, you know, is going to be that, you know, trying to show them, you know, I'm a very, you know, intelligent guy who's going to be able to quickly, you know, pick up the, your system. And I'm a guy who's going to fit into your system, a guy who's, you know, going to do the right thing, you know, show up on time, you know, show up early, um, stay out of trouble off the field. Um, so, you know, that's the one thing, you know, to show. And then the other thing is, you know, teams, whenever they see, like we were talking about earlier, see six foot seven, you know, 305 pounds, you know, it gives me that a chance to be verified. Um, and that's a big part, you know, the CGS is being able to go there and, and show them that, you know, those numbers are real. And you mentioned that you graduated with a degree in foreign affairs from Virginia and a double master's in accounting and business administration from Tulane. Ben, talk about the pride that you take in your studies and how those habits have helped you as a football player. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, the one thing, you know, and I, I talked about this a little bit, you know, when I was going through the, the grad transfer process, but I mean, for me, those decisions and, you know, even the decision to attend UVA, because that is a fantastic degree, you know, is, you know, they're 40 year decisions, they're not four year decisions. And that's how I looked at it. And, you know, and that's, you know, a perfect example is the double masters at Tulane, you know, this, uh, this last off season, you know, with COVID and everything being shut down and classes being moved online, you know, we had more opportunity to take, you know, more online classes over the summer. So, you know, I was scheduled, you know, to graduate this December with um, my MBA and just be done. And, you know, I saw this opportunity to get the, the masters of accounting as well, you know, and I'm like, it doesn't make sense not to, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense not to do it. You know, I mean, I'll be taking, you know, a couple long run classes this spring, but um, you know, it's an opportunity. It's something that, you know, I, I thought was very doable and, you know, I had the resources to do. So I figured, you know, why not do it? Um, so that, that's, you know, I mean, when you, you know, equate that to football, you know, it's the same thing, you know, this is an opportunity, you know, to, to train and prepare for the NFL, you know, you know, I'm going to go, and, you know, take it at hundred percent, just like I do with my academics. It's the only way I know how to do things is to, you know, put, you know, as much effort to try and achieve as much as possible. Um, it's the same thing, you know, I just don't know how else to operate to be completely honest. And there's some, my academic advisors tell me, you know, I'm, I'm a little crazy for taking that many, many credits, but for me, it's like, I if I didn't have anything to do with my time and, you know, it's hard for me to just sit there and watch TV, you know, I want to be doing something. If at least I'm doing classwork, you know, that that's a valuable use of my time, you know, it's the same with football, you know, I can't ever not be doing anything. I need to either be practicing or watching film. So. And then Ben, you mentioned a little bit earlier that we would get to this point and it's the conversation about football goals. Could you share what your short-term and long-term football goals are? Yeah, I mean, I mean, short-term right now, you know, my goal is, is, to, is to make an NFL roster. And I understand it's an individual goal, so it doesn't really fit what I was saying earlier. But short-term, you know, these next four months, there isn't a team that I'm, I'm on. It's Team Ben, you know. And my goal is to make an NFL roster, regardless, you know, of however I get there. Obviously, I would like to be drafted. I, I think I deserve to be drafted. But if teams don't agree, that's great. But 
what I really want is an opportunity and then it'll take care of itself. You know, I'll, I'll, I can show what I'm able to do and, and be able to go out and perform what I need to perform. So short term, that's my goal. I mean, long term goals, you know, I, I want to win a lot of games in the NFL, you know, you know, I want to go to a team that's going to win a lot of games. I want to be a big, a valuable part of that. However, that might be, you know, if my career only ends up being a practice squad player, I know that there's valuable input I can make there to help the team win. Uh, if I'm a starter, you know, obviously it's a little more clear to see how I can help a team win in that role as well. Uh, and then, you know, Super Bowl champion, you know, is every every football player's dream. You know, I want to, you know, win a Super Bowl ring. And uh, that's something that you know, would be, you know, long term, you know, a goal of mine, you know, eventually sometime in my career, um, you know, and no matter, you know, what my role is, you know, I just want to help my team win a championship. And that's, I think, what's most important to me. And now, Ben, we've spent a good amount of time getting to know you as a player. I have a few questions to allow us to get to know you away from the game, get to know you as a, as a person. You ready to go down that rabbit hole? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. First one for you. What's your favorite comfort food? So my favorite comfort food is uh, buffalo wings. Um, and it doesn't matter the flavor. Uh, you know, I do believe that, you know, bone and wings are the only way to go. Uh Bone, there's no such thing as bone chicken wings. They're chicken nuggets. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I love bone and uh, wings. Um, that's my thing. I was a connoisseur in New Orleans. Um, you know, there was a bunch of good places, you know, all over New Orleans are getting wings and same, in, you know, everywhere I've been. I mean, it's just, you know, a general thing that you can get everywhere that it's hard. I mean, it's not hard to screw up. I mean, people can definitely screw it up. But, um, you know, it, it's always easy to find a good place, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, and it's just a comfort food, you know. Even here, in, you know, I'm in Nashville right now training and, you know, my first night here, that's, you know, was my go to is to get some chicken wings, just, you know, help me, you know, this is definitely a crazy time, but help me settle down a little bit, you know, and have a little bit of comfort, you know, uh, as I'm getting ready to go through this whole process. What's the motto that you live by? So I learned this from my high school basketball coach. Um, and it's a little convoluted. So, so hear me out here, but his sure. thing was always talent plus attitude plus skill equals basketball player. But you can sub out basketball player to be anything that you want it to be. I mean, football player is obviously, in my case, the most perfect example, but it can be, you know, business student. It can be doctor. It can be anything, you know. Um, you know, and talent is, you know, your natural God-given abilities, which, you know, I've been blessed with a lot of talent. You know, we were talking about, you know, my size. That would be one of my talents that I have that, you know, help me, you know, help me, you know, perform, you know, your talents, you can improve a little bit, but generally you're stuck with what God gives you, um, which leads, you know, the two things that you control, which is your attitude and your skill and attitude, you know, Will Hall at Southern Miss, that was a big thing was attitude is everything, um, you know, and having a positive attitude at life, you know, will solve a lot of problems. Um, so that's, you know, something that, you know, I try and have every day is positive attitude with how I attack things. Uh, and then skill, you know, is another equation. It's proper knowledge plus repetition, which is very fitting to how this draft process works. You know, is I'm coming out here to Nashville to boost to, you know, obtain the proper knowledge of how to how to do the bench press, how to run the 40, how to run the L drill. And then it's going to take a whole lot of repetition, you know, to give it me to my best self. Um, so that's, you know, how I, you know, I try to apply that to everything I do. You know, I applied it to basketball. And I wasn't as good of a basketball player as Coach Rhodes, you know, hoped I would be. Um, but it really has helped me out in football. Um, and, you know, and, and everything else I do, even academics, you know, you have certain talents, you know, may or may not, you know, be a good reader or a fast reader or something like that. But, you know, your attitude is something you can control and the skills that you have are something you control. So that's, you know, what I, what I like to live my life by. Now, Ben, what's your spirit animal and why? see so this is one you know when, when I was you know thinking about it that I, I wasn't so sure what I was going to go with <laughs> um but the, the one thing you know I'm going to go with is uh you know is a, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever uh, and mostly because I'm biased because uh my fiance's dog uh, Saber is you know she got her when we were in college and you know he's been nothing but loyal to us and so that's you know the biggest thing but the thing that, you know, right now, the reason I need to be the Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, because when we pull that ball out and throw it, you know, across the yard, I've never seen any, you know, 
animal, human whatsoever, be more lo- laser focused on anything in my life <laughs> than that ball. And, that, and that's what I need to be in these next four months, you know, to this training and to, you know, preparing myself to be the best football player I can be. So that was, you know, that's the best answer I could give you right now. <laughs> um, but that, that's what I, I'm going to go with. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? So um, when I was at UVA, I had, you know, the opportunity to study abroad, you know, after my first year there. And I went with a group of students, all non-athletes. We went to uh, Dominica in uh, the Caribbean. Uh, and it's, it's a volcanic island. So there's a lot of mountains there. And there's, a, there's the Boiling Lake. It's a lake that's on top of a volcano. And because it's on top of the volcano, it's boiling. And so we, you have to hike to go see it. So it's, it's an eight-hour round-trip hike uh, with about a 2,000-foot elevation change. <laughs> um, so wow. that's the most adventurous thing, you know, I've ever done. It was probably also the hardest thing <laughs> I've ever done. Um, uh, and, I mean, it was definitely worth it getting out. The hardest part was honestly getting back. <laughs> because you're halfway through and just drained and almost out of water and you're like well I still have four hours I have to do all that again um but uh I mean it it, that's probably the most adventurous thing I've ever done um it was a lot of fun you know and I mean I was definitely dead tired my squat got a lot better after that trip though so I'm gonna (laughs) I'm gonna attribute it to that isn't that how it always goes the tough parts always getting out of there yeah <laughs> it's like now, you, want to, you want to walk and then you're like you're thinking to yourself you're like well i better turn around sometime otherwise because i'm <laughs> only whatever i walk more now i just am putting on myself at the end so now ben final question i got for you right here mm-hmm. what's your favorite movie of all time so i'm from indiana so i have to say hoosers um that's you know my, my one of my favorite movies of all time you know i've seen it hundreds of times um and and it's real you know people ask me you know you know is it really like that in indiana for basketball and i mean it's wild i mean newcastle i mean it's still like that i mean it's starting to not be as crazy as it once was when damon bailey was selling out the rca dome but i mean newcastle you know they still got you know seven of the ten largest high school basketball gyms in the state in the in the country uh or in the state of indiana um and, and that's just, just, you know, one of my favorite stories because, I mean, it encapsulates, you know, what Indiana high school basketball is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Ben Newton. Pay attention to him as we move towards the draft weekend coming up in April. He's going to be showcasing his talents at the College Gridiron Showcase coming up in just a few days here. Once again, the name is Ben Newton, a prospect on the rise. Pay attention to him. For Ben Newton. I'm Craig Forrestal. Until next time, stay safe and be easy. Hey, everybody. Craig Forrestal. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy to catch all the latest updates and podcast episodes. Until next time, stay safe and be easy.